Hello and welcome back to Glencoe. Now today I'm going to do something a little bit of experimental because I'm standing at the start of the footpath to the Larry Garten and the Larry Garten is a little track and I've done it before but I've never really done it with a photography head on. So I'm going to head on down there, we're going to go all the way to the bottom, it's about five miles and that way I'm going to see if there's any good locations and hopefully we'll get there to the end for sunset. So come and join me and let's head on down the Larry Garten. So the Larry Garten is a five mile walk and the footpath has been done up now by the National Trust so it's actually quite a good footpath. I've put my gaiters on because I remember last time I did it a few years ago and I haven't walked it for a long while since. Um, so I'll put my gaiters on in case it's a bit boggy. Um, I'm hoping that with the sun setting this time of year, we're kind of mid-February now, that we should get a nice sort of sunset and the sky's a little bit broken cloud today. There's a few little patches so there's a little bit of texture knocking about. My only concern is the orientation of the Larry Garten is kind of hidden behind the big buckle itself, the ridge of the big buckle. So I'm not sure how much light I'm going to get this side but when I get back down to Glen Etive, hopefully I'm going to get something. So let's head on down, let's see if we can find some comps and fingers crossed we get a nice sunset. So the walk down the Larry Garton from Glencoe is actually quite a pleasant walk, it's relatively flat, it's nice and easy, so it actually gives you a bit more time to look at the photography and look at the compositions which is really nice, it's a nice easy day if you've done a few hard ones around Glencoe, come and do this one, it's a nice easy day. Now what happens is you start off at the Larry Garton with a car park and you've got the river a little bit away from you, there's a little bit of a drop down, but eventually after a few minutes of walking down the footpath, the river and the footpath kind of meet up. And then you start getting these little cascades of water that come down and the, the water at the minute is all snow melt, we're in mid-February and unfortunately for the skiing, well, it's not too bad, but we've had like, quite a bit of snow melt. So the water gives you that lovely clear but turquoise colour. So what I'm looking for is a nice pool with a nice waterfall uh, leading the way with a guide in the eye up to the Larry Garten. So I found this one here which has grabbed my attention. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head on down to this one, I'm going to have a look at this. It's good because it's kind of leading the eye up to this lovely U-shaped valley at the top here. I could do a bit of light just at the end just to guide the eye through, but this colour of this pool is fantastic. So it reminds me very much of the fairy pools up in uh, the Isle of Skye there at Glen Brittle. Cool, let's head on down, let's see if we've got a composition. Um... OK, 
Okay, then I've set myself up and I quite like this shot. It's actually going to work quite well, I think. Um, so I'll show you what I've got. I'll flip you around and then I've got the camera here just sitting here. Look, there she is. And it's giving me this nice line of this water here. Let me just come down a bit. So this line of the water coming up here and you can see how it kind of guides the eye up to the lovely U-shaped valley here. Um, so that's really good. I didn't put a polarizer on because I kind of felt I wanted to keep that nice turquoise color of the water. Now what I've done is I've ended up putting a six stopper on here. So I've got the six stopper and that's allowed me to slow it right down. So because this water is only trickling, it's not really a big volume of water. I can kind of get away with really slowing it down. So what I've done is with a six stopper and really low, lowered my eye, so I'm down to 50, I think. Uh, that allows me to squeeze the aperture down a bit to f13 and gives me eight seconds. So I think it looks really quite nice. Okay. Well, if you like the shot, here is the shot. Wow, that was great, weren't it? What a lovely shot. It was really good. I love those turquoise colours and I can't wait to get that back on the computer just to see how it comes out. Cool, okay. Uh, lunchtime now, I think. So, time for a cheese and ham sandwich, I reckon. Okay, I'm going to carry on walking up the Glary Garden here. I'm just going to get to that sort of section there, that top bit. Um, I can walk it, I'm walking towards the light. It's looking fantastic. Um, over the last hour or so, the light's just got brighter and brighter. And it's just mid afternoon now, so I've got a few hours till sunset. So I've got plenty of time to stroll on over there. Uh, and hopefully it just improves and improves because that light's looking fantastic right now. Okay, let's carry on and walking into the light, shall we? halfway now and you come to a little section there's a little track that crosses the river uh, it goes over the river and then heads up towards the Buakletiv Moor range over across there so uh, it's quite nice I can see a couple of guys right on the top there so I'm quite jealous of them uh, but it does look an awful lot of effort this is a good little track if you want to get up on the, to the top of the buckle um, and you don't want to avoid sort of uh, Coriantulloch which is the big quarry there or coming around to like Curve Ridge and the north face of it to near the top now and oh that's that sun coming out look at it oh it's fantastic the only downside with the sun coming out is I'm in that quandary am I too hot am I too cold I'm now getting a sweat on so I'm gonna have to strip some layers off here I'm afraid but I guarantee when I stop I'll be pigging freezing again anyway I'm glad the sun's out and it is looking fantastic <laughs>
So that's the cairn to the top just there. That's it. And then you come around and then just let me show you this business. You come across and then all of a sudden you see this absolutely stunning vista which is just amazing. Um, and what I've got is, you can't quite see it in this, but you've got going off into Loch Etive, you can see Loch Ener, and then you can see Loch Etive all the way to the bottom there, and that heads all the way down to Oban. What a fantastic, I mean I've been down that glen a million times, and it is just amazing, that sun's so bright, uh, but to see it from this location, and to be so elevated and see that river Etive winding its way down that glen Etive, is just awe-inspiring, it really is. Absolutely amazing. I might even get set up, I think I'm going to go a bit lower, so we get a bit more of the river, but then I'm going to get set up and I've got to get a shot of this. Um, and if this sun carries on where it's going, I think I'm in for an absolute beauty, I really am. Now that was a fantastic view. I come over the brow of the hill and it was just absolutely awe inspiring. So I've just had to sit down for a bit and just take it in a little bit. And I think that's important to say is, is always sit and just absorb the landscape and lose yourself in it. Particularly when you've got that light and that amazing vista in front of you. So uh, yeah, absolutely awe inspiring. Good therapy for the mind. So my problem is, is um, when I was sitting up there, the mountain below me, the land that below me was, was kind of overlapping the, the river Etive and the Glen Etive down the, down the way. And I didn't want that in the shot really. So what I'm doing is I'm just working my way down a little bit just to get a bit lower so I can get to a position where I know I'm looking out over the Glen itself with no foreground in me that's overlapping the, the main event. So let's head on down. I'm sure there'll be a good composition here. I've got plenty of time, so there's no rush for the light. I think I've got another hour or so for sunset, so I'm in no rush. So let's go and find a good composition. Okay, I've dropped about, I would say about 70 metres or so on the way down. And then all of a sudden the glen just opens up and you stop that overlap and you see the little river running into the glen Etive and then the river Etive running to Loch Ener and then all the way to Loch Etive. I think this is just a beautiful location. It's so gorgeous, it really is. So I've got the camera set up. I'm obviously shooting into the sun. I'm, I'm waiting a little bit, it needs to come over a bit more. Um, unfortunately on the way down, there was some light rays. There's, there's this cloud just come out behind it and these lovely light rays are coming down. But unfortunately I was just halfway down so I didn't get a chance to shoot it. But it's still looking really nice. I can't see any too many clouds knocking about. So we should be in luck. Okay, so this is my composition now, and I've got this beautiful sort of V in the valley itself, which is fantastic. And then here's a little burn coming down to my left, and it kind of guides the eye down. And then you get into the river itself, goes into the river Etive, which is just here. And then that river Etive snakes its way to Loch Ener, which is about there, and then just goes all the way up to Loch Etive, and then off into the distance. I'm right in the sun here, so it's a bit bright, but uh, it's still going to work all right. I'm going to let that sun go over a little bit more, probably about another hour or so, let it drip out of the way. Um, but it's looking fantastic, the light is stunning, and if this shot works, here is the shot. <laughs> That was a fantastic shot from the camera, really delighted with that. 
I did, the light was so great and it, the, the sun went beyond this cloud with the rays. I just had to go and get the drone back up. So I popped the drone back up and while it was on, I just, the, the light and the location of the drone was just 100% perfect. And I just thought, you know what, let's grab a shot with the drone. So what I've done is I've taken a couple of shots with the drone as well, uh, just giving me a slightly different composition. So if the drone shot works, here's that shot. fantastic day out I've had a wonderful time it's been so peaceful and so relaxing it's been lovely it really has so thank you so much for coming along with me now if you do like the content as usual stop what you're doing head on down to the bottom of the page you'll see a little thumb there click on the thumbs up it just makes a massive difference for my channel it really does and if you really like this content then do me a favor and go and click on the subscribe button and if you click on the bell you'll get a notification every time I post I'm posting every two or three weeks at the moment which is how busy I am so I'm pretty pleased with that so that's pretty good going so once again I can't thank you enough it's always a pleasure to have you guys with me on these beautiful adventures I'm so lucky and I do pinch myself every day so thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video ah keys where have I put the keys? <laughs> oh. Where did I put the keys? Oh no. Oh. <laughs> I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs>